In her own way, Leela is the new Middle East. She's a dancer, performing in that unmistakably Arab tradition in Arab East Jerusalem. But Leela is an Israeli, a Jew. It's fair to say that the Middle East is changing, dramatically and fast. But today's Middle East peace is still fragile, and the pressure on Terry A. Lass and its nurturer to strengthen it is enormous, and he knows it. The next six to eight months are very, very critical, and the um, worst case scenario would be a state of civil war in, in Gaza. When against all the odds, Larson got the Israelis and the Palestinians to sit down last year and talk peaceful coexistence, this ostensibly ordinary Norwegian pulled off a modern miracle. The basic reason why I took the job is that I feel a moral obligation to, uh, to continue, because if this process collapses, I'm quite sure the chances for a new war in the Middle East are, are, are very, very large, and that will affect economies and politics throughout the world. Mona Yule, the other half of the Norwegian husband and wife peace team, is still very much part of the action. In Oslo, she told me they feared a personal anti-climax after the drama of the White House handshake, but it hasn't happened. But even Mona, a high-flying diplomat herself, can get lost in Larson's frantic wake. He's not letting me in. Both Mona and I are um, very close friends of uh, key persons on, uh, on, on both sides. I, I think that is uh, one of the reasons why we are um, frequently and consistently asked to, uh, to uh, join in in, uh, in in different sort of meetings. The next 24 hours are all important. Larson's plotting a top-level lunch, in fact a diplomatic coup. While he goes to work on the politics, his aides are laying the logistical groundwork. Uh, the Foreign Minister's security, there will be the Israeli security, the Palestinian security. The other aspect is that uh, we want to keep the security as discreet as possible. The plan is to get the key players, Israel's Foreign Minister Shimon Peres and Yasser Arafat together, over lunch, in of all places the Gaza Strip, normally a no-go area for an Israeli minister like Peres. There'll be the Israeli people checking who comes in and out. His hand-picked assistants, an Englishman and a Canadian, are old Middle East hands. I think the foreign minister's going to have a shower there, <laughs> so he can get back on the plane clean. Um... I would suggest that you go down to Gaza uh, as early as possible tomorrow morning. Down to the details, his two assistants are coming to grips with the idiosyncratic Larson style. Assume no hurdles, brook no obstacles, the good guys always win. How long time do we have with, uh, with Balin then? Half an hour? At 47, Larson's a classic Scandinavian product of the 60s. A democratic left baby boomer who cut his ideological teeth on the whole idea of changing the world. Now you could say he's actually doing it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have twelve guests for lunch. The two old foes, and Arafat and the, uh, Perez, the, uh, have grown to uh, trust uh, Larson. If it wasn't his plan being put to them, it'd be out of the question. Mm. So if we schedule it, for, you know, let's say ten fifteen, it'll bump. It's possible. It depends how long you need with Arafat. Fifteen minutes. Okay, no problem. I think that he's the right man in the right place. He's committed. Uh, he became Mr. Peace. It it's, was uh, Yossi Balin, Perez's deputy, who first put his faith in the audacious Larson. Balin was Israel's man behind last year's secret Oslo talks. It's uh, his almost in, uh, personal interest uh, that uh, the peace process uh, would succeed. Uh, now he is uh, some of a historic uh, men on the world. Yes. Hassan Asfour, an old school PLO Marxist, was also in the channel as the insiders described the Oslo talks. When I was talking to Yossi Balin, he described Larson to me as Mr. Peace. How would you describe it? It's not the early peace, because sometimes Mr. Peace thinking. But when you see the man, he can understand the peace with loving the two peoples. 
It's more than peace because Larson loves the Palestinian and the Israeli. In dusty, dirt-poor Gaza, before the Oslo Accord, little love was lost between the Palestinians and their Israeli occupiers. The fledgling peace has brought some relief to Gazans, but Larson knows all too well that they need more. The big day begins with His Excellency, the UN coordinator in the occupied territories, doing his stuff in the international in, uh, spotlight. In so I do hope, uh, Tim and Arafat, that I will be back here next week with an additional lump of money for this very important project. Uh, today, it's a I'm new and strangely much, public uh, life for the Oslo back channel boy, but unfazed, he's ever the optimist. My, uh, my best pleasure here today is to see that all predictions of failure of the, implementation, of the implementation of the Oslo Accord, um, that all those predictions uh, were wrong, because we are standing here today, together with Chairman Arafat, as the leader of the Palestinian Authority, in full charge of Gaza and Jericho. And I, I thrive, uh, I think, better uh, backstage than, uh, than front stage, but um, I, think I feel comfortable with uh, both, actually. OK, this play. The soup, the gazpacho, serve the swan neck towards the table. Good. On the dessert side, when it's served on the shell, this is facing the customer side. The decoration is on the top. The curtain the raiser at Arafat's headquarters over. Preparations are underway at Larson's official Gaza residence for the main event of the day. The Larson lunch. Hopefully, another milestone in the peace process. Okay, let's, let's have a look at the table. Before his two high-powered guests yeah, arrive, the behind-the-scenes facilitator is very much in evidence. Woodrow's is on the wall there. Where is Woodrow's? Uh, let me first show you. Yes, 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 yes there. <laughs> is this too high? If you sit down, you're going to be... Uh, is it going to cut you off? No, that's fine. Hello, Mr. Arafat. How are you there this morning? It's the Larson way of doing things. The convivial mood, the relaxed atmosphere, crucial in Norway last year, and crucial again here today in Gaza. Okay, Dan, if there's going to be a tete a tete. The communication between the parties um, uh, has to be based on trust. Because you, you cannot do a sort of scientific research and establish the sort of empirical facts here. Um, uh, all the sort of critical issues must be based on, uh, on uh, assumptions, uh, belief, trust. And uh, the person-to-person -person, uh, relationship is uh, vitally important to, uh, to, to carry such a process. No, is there another loo here? At, uh, there's, a, there's, there's a loo up there for everyone. This is the staff okay, loo. It might look like a lot of trouble over one small lunch, but you have to keep reminding yourself that Larson's not just building trust and confidence. He's breaking down generations of hostile mindsets. Are there some security over there? There's, there's a guy in this house. There isn't one in that one yet. Uh -huh. okay. um, Unfortunately, however, it's not just diplomacy that has to be kept alive. Outside, with an influx of both Israeli and Palestinian security, came a quite extraordinary, almost Middle Eastern surreal scene. With their conspicuously different styles and demeanour, they congregate on opposite sides of the street, sizing each other up. A year ago, this lot would have had each other in their gun sights. Today, in one of those great paradoxes of our time, they're on the same mission, protecting each other's leaders.
Then, with appropriate high drama, Perez, once a sworn enemy of the PLO, arrives in Gaza as the welcome guest of the Palestinian leader. As we've said, nothing in the Middle East these days is the same. Diplomacy, as Larson's well aware, demands the two leaders arrive at precisely the same moment. And they do. A short, slightly chaotic, but nonetheless historic photo opportunity, including this quick question from the Australian media. Mr. Arafat, what do you think of this man Larson? He is who's involved himself in your affairs. I can't speak in front of his face. <laughs> As the final toast is being made, we're allowed back in. It's obvious that Larson has worked his Nordic magic yet again. <coughs> Coats off, shared jokes, good-natured laughter, not a sign of formality or tension. Larson entices Arafat and Perez to pose for happy snaps with the Palestinian waiters. Larson's idea of a politically symbolic finale for an occasion like this. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you very much. Perez seeks out the ubiquitous Mona. Have a safe trip back home. I just wanted to say to everybody, it was a great show today, and absolutely superb. Okay, cheers everybody. The United Nations Special Coordinator is pleased with the day's work. It's up to you. I mean, I was so afraid yesterday because it was so messy, it was absolute chaos, and I thought that this was going to be a bloody catastrophe, and it really went so well. The man himself is flushed with the warm glow of success. So it was a really an awesome experience, I must say. Very moving as well. And the reason, the reason why it's great, is that if the atmosphere is like that, yeah. it's possible to move ahead. They might be on top of things here in Gaza, but there's still the problem of Jerusalem. The Israeli leader, Yitzhak Rabin, is adamant that Jerusalem is just not negotiable. And Yasser Arafat has promised his people that this place will be the capital of the new state of Palestine. On the face of it, totally irreconcilable positions. So the work of Larson, the gentle persuader, is clearly far from over. There will be a solution on uh, on Jerusalem because the uh, the uh, uh, sort of historical structural forces are so strong that neither of the parties can live for a long time with an unsolved uh, Jerusalem uh, question. Go back one year, and you look at what Yasser Arafat said one year ago about Gaza and the West Bank, and you look at what uh, the uh, Israeli politicians said about um, Gaza and the West Bank. They were just as far apart, but in the end, I feel. It will take a long time, it will take years. In the end, I think they will find a solution and it has to be a compromise between those two positions. <laughs> Last year, thanks to the secret Oslo channel they set up, the Middle East took over Terry A. Larson and Moni Yule's life. Now, having brought at least a kind of peace to that tense and tinder dry part of the world, the Middle East is their life. It's been going so fast that um, yesterday I really had to pinch my arm saying, this is a dream, this is Hollywood, this is not real life, but fortunately it is. This is one of the most um, uh, interesting and most spectacular political and social experiments in our time. Touch wood and cross fingers, it will last, but um, so far, so good.